Hello, good afternoon, welcome back, I'm Claire, this is Purple Poppy and I managed to find a little bit of time today so I thought I would jump on and finish the spring journal. So we've made all of our components, we've got all our pages, we're just going to make our cover and sew it all together, okay? Now, I must be honest and say, I have already made, whoops, I've already made my topper. So, at the end, before I turn off, I will quickly show you how I put the topper together, all right? So, first things first, I've got a page from my Sprinton kit and I am just going to take all the white edges off okay whoops that always happens doesn't it always happens let's get it a little bit higher there we go uh, on one of the reasons I was glad to find a bit of time to get on and finish this today is because I need to get, to get on with a new project that I want to do. Also, I need to do the filming of the May design team project for happiness and crafting. So I feel like I've got lots of things to be getting on with. So it was bothering me that I had lots of sort of jobs to do and nothing was as it were finished. And I don't really like starting something new until I've finished what I was doing. So I thought, yep, yeah, I've got this hour. I'm going to jump on and get this done. So you guys that have been following along and building the journal, you too will be able to finish up. Okay. Now, obviously, you don't need to have... The springtime kit in order to do this you can use any pretty paper that you've got and I'm just doing this for the inside of my cover as you'll see in a minute okay I've put my woolly on the sun's out but it's a little bit chilly but then I suppose the argument is if I was to stop being a fresh air freak and shut the windows then I wouldn't be so chilly would I <laughs> I just like to have the air blow through, especially this year. We've all been at home so much. Oh, oh I'm going to edge, edge this one as well. We've all been at home so much, I feel like the house gets a bit stuffy. Stuffy and stale. So I just like to have the windows open if I can. Okay, now this that I'm inking up now this is the uh, 160 gram cream card that I did splodge dipping with when I was doing all the doing towards the beginning of this mini series okay but I only splodged one side I did two of them if you remember one we used for some tags and this one I kept back to use for the cover. Now I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, oh it's not very thick for a cover Claire. Well, it's the same argument as always. On its own, it's not very thick and it's not particularly strong. However, obviously I didn't do this side, I only did the one side. Once we glue this into place and then we glue our topper onto the front, becomes a very different story. Okay, so I'm gluing, make sure you glue right up to the edge. We don't want any flappy corners. Okay, flappy corners is the nightmare of a journaler or a journal maker, we do not want flappy corners, we want them all stuck down nicely. 
Okay, so I've just prick stick that, if you can see. This has got no up or down, so that doesn't matter. This has, but obviously we're looking at this one. And as always, gently put it into place before you press down because you want to make sure it's where you want it. And then I'm using my card just to press it home. Okay, make sure it's properly stuck down. You can see I have managed to get a flappy corner so we'll get a bit more glue on that get rid of him and I've got a little tiny bit at the top here where is it there where I'll see miss that edge so we'll just stick him down as well okay so that's all stuck down make sure yep that's all lovely so let's wrap our glue up okay now i obviously didn't ink only ink that side didn't i goodness me it's because i'm so excited to be getting it finished so let's get some ink on this side and just ink down that edge because we've inked the paper so we want the extra ink. i'm not worried about these little paint splodges from where i covered the other side all adds to the character of it in my opinion obviously if that bothers you you can cover it a bit more completely than I have but it's not bothering me okay we have it all the way down last side Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to fold it in half. Okay, and there's our half line. But I have a little trick for when I do this because I always feel that you don't necessarily want this one point on a spine, even though you've got no spine, if you know what I mean. Because obviously, in a book, you usually have a spine that's half an inch, an inch, two inches, whatever. And when we fold this over, all we get is that one fold line. Well, I don't want that. So what I do is I put it onto, having folded it in half, put it onto my scoreboard, find the line where I folded it, and run on my scoreboard. I then go one to the right, and one to the left. So you've got three score lines. And the reason I do that is it just takes the point out and gives you a slightly more rounded fold. Okay? You can see it just gives you that. And obviously you need to go down and bend your lines. Don't worry, I know we're softening it up, but that's fine okay and then you just get that like mini rounded spine area okay because obviously the work that we're going to put inside is not flat is it okay so that's that bit then what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the journal and i'm going to get my sewing kit okay now I have my awl. If you don't have an awl, you can use a needle. And I use waxed thread. But you can use any kind of thread for this you like. Now I am actually going to do three and a half times the length. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to string buttons on the end. 
okay some people don't cut it until they're finished sewing but i like to have the length that i'm going to use so that's one two three and a half and i'm going to cut that off like so i then use this needle now this is part of a teddy bear sewing kit i find that the eye is um wide enough and yet small enough that i don't get too big a hole but it holds my thread nicely and for me it's a nice length needle but obviously you must use what needle works for you and now i'm going to go through and i'm going to make sure like you see this one's at the bottom well i want it in the middle so move him up to the middle just go through make sure that everything is where you want it to be okay this one can go up a little bit that's okay that's okay right all right and then lay it on its back and push it all together that way because if you stand it up gravity will pull it down i'm going to take my bookmark out because i don't need that in there okay and then i'm going to push it home tight and while i'm holding it i'm going to get a clip and i'm going to find the middle okay pushing it home tight i put my finger in the middle and i'm going to clip the top of the front half of the book okay then i'm going to flip it over i'm going to push it home again and i'm going to clip the bottom of the back half of the book that's how i do it okay just double check now you can see look i've lost my connection that's too loose there so i'm going to take that out okay and i'm going to push it home again and do this as many times as you need to until you're happy that you've got a good tight fit all right once you're happy you've got a good tight fit thread your needle up so i run that down through my finger and my nail to get a nice wide flat slide my needle over the oh see nothing ever works on camera you do it a million times normally slide your needle over it and pull it through and i usually leave what's that about three inches something like that no knot you don't need a knot and then i open my book up and I go to what is by eye the center now this will only work because this is a single signature and then I go about an inch down from the top obviously if you are doing several signatures you would need and about an inch up from the bottom you would need a template to make sure that all your holes are in the same place but we're doing a single one so then poke your needle through and pull okay like so and then I tend to lift this up and just put that under there to hold it tight for me okay now look at this so what I do now is I line that up and I will poke through there make a little hole put my needle through the hole that I've made making sure that your book is obviously up the right way and then just pick this up poke it inside now the reason I do it this way is because sometimes when you punch all of them together you will find see now i had that upside down didn't i 
So I'm just going to bring that back out. Right, if you punch them all together, sometimes you will find that... Um, they move and it's not where you want like in the same way that I had that upside down they move and it becomes a problem okay so I've now got that nicely in there and there's my hole so make that hole there if you find it easier do them all together that's absolutely fine no problem at all Bring my thread back up, line my book up, and pull. Okay, then I'm going through the hole that I made with my awl, open my book up, double check that my needle is in the centre and I haven't gone off skew. There you go, just come through the centre and pull it nice and tight. Okay, and then all the way down to the bottom hole and then create your hole in your cover and again I'm sorry if it's going up and down and a bit off camera but obviously it's a little bit awkward to sew stationary now you can see I've got a bag so I'm just pulling that tight okay now I need to go back through that middle hole and this is the one that is sometimes problematic. If you have a problem, take your clips off because it's basically connected now. Okay. And go through your outside cover and pull it tight okay don't worry about that bag we can pull that from the other side and then push your needle through and see where you're at are we in the center where we want to be can't even find the center now so you see we've gone one too far from the center so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it back a little bit and I heard it clip off and there we are, we've come through, okay? Poke it through. Right, take your needle out, you don't need your needle anymore. And now what you need to do is you need to pull this one to the right and pull this one to the left and pull them so that it goes nice and tight so that when you look it's like a guitar string yeah so pull it nice and tight do one knot and pull it and do two knots and pull it okay then close it back up press it down and then just check your pages so yep and just press a few of them flat and make sure that your signature is nice and tight and not moving around inside your cover okay now before I cut these threads off I want to put some buttons on because they are what create the lovely chinky noise so let's open it up so we can see where we are now this is obviously the shorter thread and i'm gonna feed from the back it's nice to have fairly large buttonholes for this okay so I'm going to feed from the back to the front, whoops, and from the front to the back, okay, and now I've got one button and I'm going to push it down because I want it below 
my pages okay and then I'm going to take a blue one and I'm going to go back no I'm not I'm going to go front this time see I'm not thinking I'm going to go front such a simple task really front and then back to the front and now I'm going to slide that up so that it's slightly underneath okay and then this one I'm going back to the front she says can't quite grip that I mean obviously if you find it easier you could do this with a thread on a needle but when I'm off camera <laughs> I find it easier to do it without a needle okay and then back three it's because my fingers are so big that's what it is right I've now got all three buttons on there and all I'm going to do is I might have to move them up a little bit and then bring them back because um, I need the space because all I'm going to do is tie a knot a double knot okay oh for goodness sake right need to tie a double knot to make sure that bottom button can't come off if you've got a particularly big hole you might even need for it to be a treble hole there you go and then just slide your buttons back down like like so well it sounds like Harvey's having a printing mission upstairs and then just trim it a little bit below your knot to make sure that your stray edges are off and then I'm going to do the same on the other one but on the other one what I'm going to do is I'm going to deliberately make it a little bit longer because well it's just personal taste it's what I like I think it looks better when one is longer than the other but obviously we don't want it that long so I'm going to start it probably about there okay And then three. Come back, Jack. I've only done one, haven't I? Look. And I'm doing it, as you can see, when there's four holes, I'm doing it on the diagonal. So just six little buttons here. You could only put one button on each string. That'd be absolutely fine. If you haven't got buttons, you may choose to use something like beads, because beads will chink as well. So you just want a little bit of chink. That's what it's about. It just adds for an interesting noise when you're handling your journal, that's all. And then obviously we get our Double. I mean, at Christmas time, it's nice to put the little bells on because then they chinkle, obviously, like little jingle bells. It's just something to add a little bit of noise. Okay, 
and bring it down to the knot like so and then again I'm just going to trim off a little bit below okay you can see I've got a little score there where I missed my page it's not a major problem and then you got a little chinkle okay and I'm going to put my topper on so this is my topper and I want it to go smack bang in the middle there okay so whoops just throwing the glue on the floor, that's not very clever, is it? Right. Glue around the edge and down the middle of that piece there. And then I'm coming all the way around this edge. And up I feel like I've got a oh no there it comes I thought I had glue issues for a minute across there and then obviously down this edge and backwards and forwards across and up and down a few circles get plenty of glue on this because obviously you don't want it coming off right plenty of glue and then I'm going to position that in the middle like so and then to get a really good stick I'm going to open it up press from the inside Okay, bring it back and check it. If you're not happy, as I'm not, I think there is definitely a glue issue there with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my glue pot with my trusty PVA. Yes, yeah, see that feels like it's hardly stuck at all. And I'm going to get a paintbrush and I'm going to paint it because I would rather smother it in glue and wait for it to dry than worry that for some reason it's not stuck. So I'm never afraid to use too much glue. Um, I'd rather wait for it to dry. I don't want things falling apart. So as you can see, I've now covered all of that. It's all completely covered. I'm even going to get that underside there. And a little bit under there as well. Okay. And then pick it up again and go again give it a minute and then bring it oh i didn't realize i had journal there bring it over press it down And there we have, obviously that needs a little bit of drying time, there we have our entire spring journal, all done, all finished, ready to go away and play with. So I hope you've enjoyed that little series, I'm going to balance that up there for you, like that, I think you can see that. And while that's up there, I'm going to show you how I made this topper. So basically, I took a 
couple of pieces of corrugated card okay and I pulled it this is a double layer one so obviously we want single layers there we go and I just pulled it all apart and that's obviously where I got my lines from okay I've got no I've broken my thumb now and it makes it sounds really stupid but it's made it so I can hardly use my thumb which is weird but there you go okay now somebody did leave a comment in a previous video that the easiest way to get these thin papers off is actually to dip it into some water um, obviously feel free to try that or whatever method that you know personally I like to just stick to this because although it can be frustrating it's um, I don't like wet cardboard that's then dried again okay so I'm just shaping this up a little bit so it's sort of like this one and then exactly the same thing again um. obviously this isn't the quickest job in the world and this is something that I could have done in prep but you know I'll show you it as it is most of you say you prefer that see the whole process but I have normally got a thumb now then find a spike to give this a little helping hand bending it that doesn't matter right let's get all that out of the way now let's see if we can find an edge because sometimes if you can get the edge you can pull quite a wide piece off the way that I just did with that other one but that's obviously not going to happen with this is it Guys, so we're getting some wide a bit. Okay. now we want that across there that's all rubbish I want that and of course these are just packaging boxes or pieces of packaging boxes of stuff that's been delivered so no major shakes really 
Right, I just want to get this piece off because I want it more open at the top there and I want a bit more at the bottom here. Right, so I'm going to put that. See, now that, that works for me. Okay, so then what I did was I took a piece of my cotton, coffee dyed cotton, I pulled up there like that. Okay. And then we had a slightly wider one, so like that, okay. Because I'm going to put this in there, and I'm going to put that on there, and then I'm going to put that on there like that to give me the four layers. And then I just tore that wording out of my spring kit. And this is just a, a flower that I had. But what I did to do this was, I'm going to move this out of the way because this is finished and I don't want it getting dirty. Because to do this, I use my sprays. So grab my blue and is that the yellow? No, I think that's the yellow. Yeah. And then what I did, sorry if I've just jogged you, is I literally went like that. And then I went like that with my yellow. Okay. And I allowed them to dry because obviously once they're wet, it's not a lot of fun. But that one stuck on there, that one stuck on there, and that one stuck on there. And I stuck all of them together, okay? And then once they were all set, I gave them another little spritz where I wasn't happy that there was the right colours. Like so. And that is how I made that topper, which is now nicely stuck. So there is our spring journal. I hope you've enjoyed this mini series and you'll be off to play and craft yourself. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.